My name is Kim Cofino, and I'm a technology and learning coach at Yokohama International School in Japan. And over the last five years at YS, we've had a ton of changes, particularly in how we access technology. We've gone from the lab and laptop cart setup to our connected learning community, where each student in grade three through 12 has their own laptop, and students in early learning to grade two share class sets of laptops and iPads, to our new initiative this year, where we're trying a two to one, where each grade seven student gets an iPad and a laptop, so two devices for each student. That's a lot of change for five years in any school. And we've been really fortunate that it's gone amazingly smoothly. And of course, we're super fortunate to be living in a country that has the infrastructure to support this kind of change. But actually looking back, as we're implementing this two-to-one program, we realize that what we've done is kind of a recipe for innovation. We've kind of developed these ingredients that work really well together and when combined can create successful, innovative processes, whether or not it's about technology. It's the process and the methodology that we've developed that's really successful. So I want to share that recipe for innovation with you. But before I do that, I'd like to ask you to think for just a moment. Is there something that you're really passionate about? Is there an innovation that you want to bring to your school? Something you want to take home and really change? Take a moment and think about that innovation you're excited about. All right, got it in your mind? Okay, so this was totally accidental. We didn't know that we were doing it at the time. But looking back, this kind of five ingredient recipe for innovation is really effective and we're using it for more than just technology related projects. So these are our five elements that are really working for us. And the first one, the most important one, is to look outside. To seek out other schools that are doing the kinds of things that you want to do. Maybe they're two or three years down the path, so they can give you kind of a benchmark for success, what you want it to look like. So you can get the idea of what is going on in schools outside of your kind of bubble that you're in, in your own school. And this can be actually going to those schools, like YS went to Hong Kong and looked at one-to-one -one schools that were farther along than us to see how they work. Or it can be bringing people back to your school and learning from them in your school setting. So every year we run a mini conference called Beyond Laptops where we invite educators from around Asia to kind of share and talk about the development of their one-to-one -one programs. And once you've been inspired by those ideas from outside your school community and you have this feeling of where you want to go with this initiative and this momentum, you need to look inside, to listen inside, to hear what your stakeholders have to say, your parents and your students, and to hear their values and their needs and their wants and their goals for this innovation. So they become part of the decision-making process. At YAS, we're really proud that we always have students, parents, and teachers, along with administrators, in the same room when we're making big decisions, like visioning for our connected learning community, or here we're refining our vision for our one-to-one -one, uh, training one trial with the iPads. And you can see we've got sixth graders and seventh graders and parents and teachers in there. Once you're inspired and you've heard the voices from inside your school community, you know how those two things work together, you can customize your plan for your school. Every school is unique, every school is different, and what works for us might not work for you, and that's okay. You want to customize whatever your initiative is for your school culture. For us, this example would never work in any other school other than YS. We have this three strikes rule, so if students break the responsible use policy doing the same thing three times in a row, after a series of conversations with the principal and their parents, they get issued this uh, special laptop called the YS Corrections Laptop. This would not fly anywhere else, but it works really well at YS. The kids know, obviously, what it looks like. Nobody wants to get that laptop. This is super effective for us. Maybe it won't work for you, and that's okay. Works for us. Um, so once you've got the inspiration, you've listened to the, your stakeholders, and you have this kind of customized plan, I think it's really important to empower your students. Maybe that's a student ambassador team, like we saw up here today, or maybe that's a student leadership team, or maybe that's just letting them share their knowledge with teachers in a setting where they're the leader. And you can see Michael here is doing a speed geeking session with our teachers where he's teaching them how to use an app called Self Control, which is really great for managing distractions and very popular at YS. 
And finally, oftentimes we plan, we spend so much time planning, we work so hard, we've got everything exactly the way we want it, that we're so hesitant to change anything or veer from the path at all. But I think it's really important to keep evolving, to try new things, to make risks, uh, to take risks. And even if you have a failure, to take that opportunity to learn from your mistakes and refine and make it better as you go along. And you guys have taken the first step on this path by coming here to ICS for Learning 2.0. You're about to embark on two and a half days of amazing learning with our fantastic Learning 2 leaders and workshop presenters. And you're going to have an opportunity to really digest what you're learning and reflect and talk to other people in the cohort sessions. And then you'll have the opportunity to customize your learning in our unconference sessions. So even if you don't have an idea right now, even if you don't have an innovative inspiration at this very moment. I promise you will when you leave this campus two and a half days from now. So I'm just going to ask you to take a moment and think about that innovative idea you were thinking about before and ask yourself, how are you looking outside? How are you listening inside? How are you customizing your ideas for your school community, empowering student voices, and continuing evolve, to evolve? How can you take those five elements and create a recipe for innovation for your school.